one ring modulator to rule them all. Oh wait, two ring modulators. PM Foundation's dual ring modulator. Take a look. It's done. And it's surface mount. And it works. So my first uh, synthesizer module done in surface mount components that I didn't have to call upon external help to get it to work. So, big triumph on my part. You can address congratulations to me in the comments below. Ring modulator. What is a ring modulator? Well, it's, in fact, it's related to a voltage controlled amplifier in that it takes two input signals and what it puts out essentially is uh, the two signals multiplied together. But with a VCA, what you're usually doing is multiplying one signal by a voltage control signal, and that voltage control signal is always positive. So if the input signal is negative, then when you multiply it by the positive control voltage, it becomes another negative number when you have a positive signal multiplied by a positive control voltage, it's positive. Okay, fine. What happens if you have a negative control voltage? Well, generally with a voltage controlled amplifier, it'll ignore it. So you just give positive control voltages to a voltage controlled amplifier. With a ring modulator, usually what happens is you have two audio frequency signals one multiplying the other and they both can go positive or negative so if you've got them both positive you get a positive output if one of them is positive the other is negative you get a negative output if they're both negative you get a positive output this is known as four quadrant multiplication uh, ring modulators are also known as four quadrant multipliers and the thing with four quadrant multiplication is that what you end up with is a signal that has within it the frequencies that are the sums and the differences of the input frequencies, but not the any of the input frequencies themselves. So if you've got an input that's a sine wave with a given frequency, that frequency doesn't appear in the output, but the sum of the two frequencies going in will appear in the output and the difference of the two frequencies. We'll get a bit more of a picture of that later on. Anyway, the um, PM Foundation's dual ring modulator, it's two ring modulators in one module, two inputs, one output for each, as I said, surface mount. The, the build here is a little bit easier in some ways than the, um, the PM Foundation's sample and hold. You do have two integrated circuits here to deal with rather than just the one that you had in the sample and hold. But the, I think the number of other components may be a little bit smaller and certainly you don't have as many components down here in between these jacks at, like you do with the uh, sample and hold which gets to be an issue if you're trying to debug a problem as I have learned. There's also fewer taller components right around the IC. So it's, it's a little bit easier to get access to it if things are not quite working properly. And things were not quite working properly when I, when I built this. So one side was working, the other side wasn't. And that turned out to be a, an intermittent connection on, on the uh, TL072 IC and, and heating up the, um, the pins on one side of that IC fixed the problem. Took a while to find that, but it's now working. Anyway, let's see what it sounds like. All right, we have the ring modulator here. It is connected to the 
pulse wave output on the Bifaco Even VCO. It's connected to the pulse wave output on the Mother 32, and the output is going into the Mother 32. If we look at, if we listen to just what's happening on the Mother 32, it's that kind of a sound and a similar sound from the Bifaco. They're tuned to nearly the same frequency. If we listen to the ring modulator, this is what we get. So you're hearing, uh, you're hearing a fairly conventional sort of square wave, pulse wave kind of a sound, but with a, a beat frequency to it, which is the difference frequency of the two uh, oscillators, which are very close together in frequency, but a little bit of difference, so you hear that beating. I turn up the frequency of one of them, the beating starts to get faster. So eventually, it becomes audible as a deep bass note, which is not there in the in the input frequencies, but it's the difference of the two input frequencies. Now if I turn this up enough, we hit some sweet spots like around here. This is a place where the frequencies are closely related, and so you get more or less a harmonic uh, spectrum of sound here. with some beating going on. But if I go in between the sweet spots, it gets weird. If I then play this with an envelope generator with a, a fast attack and a long decay, it has a lot of the characteristics of a bell sound. Let's go up a couple of octaves here. Kind of bell-like tones. Of course, we can do things like uh, what we can do a pulse width modulation using the LFO. Bring this up. Or, you know, a frequency modulation with the envelope. This is with frequencies that are pretty close to each other, but if I, let me take this down a couple octaves, we're way down here. But then let me, let me take one of the frequencies and bring it up several octaves. And we get different characteristics. So yeah, there you are. Tons of fun with a ring modulator. 
that's the PM Foundation's ring modulator. Hope you enjoyed that. We're going to have some more fun with some more modules coming up soon. Like and subscribe. Where is it? Like and you know where it is. Anyway, uh, follow analog output. See you later.